In this video, we are going to configure view item event so you can track how many users are visiting to your product pages and which items they are viewing. We are also making it enhanced so you can track event details such as item ID, item name, brand, value, etc. We are going to use Google Tag Manager and Shopify Store with Google Analytics 4 in this tutorial. If you have already configured Google Tag Manager on your website, that's well and good. Otherwise, you can watch this video to configure that. There are three prerequisites of this video. You need to have a Google Tag manager container setup on your Shopify store. You need to have a Shopify account and you need to have a Google Analytics 4 property created. In this video, the first thing we are going to do is connect the GA4 property with Google Tag Manager account. So head over to your Google Analytics property. On the bottom left corner, you are going to see an admin option. Click on the admin and under the property column, we are navigating to data streams. Data stream is basically a pipeline that connects your Shopify store with Google Analytics property. If you have already created a web screen, that's well and good otherwise click on the data screen and this is the measurement id that we are going to copy measurement id is the only thing that we need on ga4 account in order to configure ga4 in google tag manager let's copy the measurement id and head back to the google tag manager because we are going to use this property multiple times so let's just create a variable for that in order to create a user defined constant variable let's head to the variable section on google tag manager on the variable section let's click new on the user defined section click anywhere on the tag configuration, click anywhere on the variable configuration and select constant. Paste the measurement ID and rename this to GA4 measurement ID. If your spellings are better, then that's well and good. Let's hit save. Now we have created a variable where we have the GA4 measurement ID. Let's head back to the tags to create the first configuration tag that will track the most common events such as page view, user engagement, session start, etc. On the left top corner, you will see an option for new. We want this tag to fire on all pages. So under the triggers, we are going to select all pages and on the tags. Previously, we used to have GA4 configuration tag. However, that has been replaced by Google tag. Let's select the Google tag and under the tag ID, we are going to use the measurement ID for GA4. Let's select that and we don't need to do any additional configuration for this one. And let's rename it to G tag GA4 configuration tag. All right, you can have more than one Google tag on your door. So it's good that you rename it based on GA4 or Google Ads. Let's hit save. So this has created the GA4 configuration tag. So once you have created GA4 configuration tag, this will track all the basic events such as page view, user engagement, session start, etc. Now we want to create a new trigger that will track the view item event on GA4. Let's switch to trigger and create a trigger that will trigger this event. We are going for a custom event which is called view item. Let's search for custom event and let's call it view underscore item. View item is a GA4 standard event name. However, if you have Google ad or any other integration or app connected with the website, this can cause issues with that. So what we're going to do is instead of using the standard name, we are going to create a custom GA4 name because we are in control of the data they do so we can manage this ourselves. Let's copy this name and create custom view item. The only reason for renaming this from view item to custom view item is to avoid any kind of duplication and issues when we are triggering these events in Google Tag Manager. Let's hit save and go to tag. We have created the trigger for the view item event and now we have to do is create a new tag that will send this view item event back to the GA4. Let's select the trigger that we have created and under the tags we are going to select GA4 event. It is asking for the measurement ID. We can select the variable that we created earlier and for the event name we are going to use the standard event name for view item. Let's save this tag. This is GA4 custom event for view item. Let's hit save. Let's do a preview and connect the debug view with the website to see how the integration is working so far. We can visit to one of the product pages to see if the view item event is being triggering or not. So now we are on this page and we can see that the GA4 tag is firing on the website. Let's head over to the debug window and we can see that the view item tag has not fired. That is because the Google Tag Manager is configured to send the event. However, we need to configure the Shopify store to create this event first. You need to have some sort of coding experience. However, if you follow this tutorial line by line, everything should work fine. Let's go back to the Shopify store in order to create the view item event data layer snippet. Click on online store and create themes. It is better to create a duplicate of your theme in case you mess something up while editing the code. Let's hit edit code 
and go directly to the theme file. I have written a JavaScript code that you can use and that will be linked down in the description. We are going to create a snippet for this one. It's better to create snippets so everything is in its own code. Let's create a snippet for data layer product. Once you have created this file, paste this code here and hit save. What this snippet is basically going to do is going to create a view item event. However, this snippet is not on the website right now. So we need to make sure that this code fires on the website when the product template page has been viewed. So we are going to create one more snippet file in this snippet. We are going to create one more snippet file in this one for head section. Let's create head data layer snippet and you can paste this code right here and hit save. Now all we need to do is go back to the template file and locate where we have Google Tag Manager code and bring that snippet here. So in your Google Tag Manager code, we are going to include head data layer file. All of this code with word to word instruction will be found in the blog. So you don't have to worry what you need to copy and paste here. Once you have included the data layer code, what this line of code is going to do is this will paste this code on the whole Shopify store and what this code is doing is that this will see if the template is product and if the template is product it will push this code on the page let's go back to the website and hit refresh on this product template page Let's open this side by side. All right, on the product page, we can see that a view custom event has been triggered. Let's open the data layer to see what kind of information we have in this one. We have item ID, item name, currency, store name, details, and everything. And we can see that the view item event has been triggered for GA4. If we go back to the Google Analytics 4 real-time reports, or we can check directly in the debug view. As the debug view has been connected, we can see all the events coming in. So this view item event has been locked in. However, you might notice that we don't have any enhanced e-commerce parameters such as item id item name coming directly into the ga4 we do have that information on the google analytics we do have that information on google tag manager so far so what we need to do is create some variable that will extract these values and send them to ga4 let's get back to the google tag manager and under the variables we are going to create a new setting variable that has been introduced by google tag manager all right under the user defined variables click new and click anywhere on the tag variable configuration. We are looking for Google tag event settings. Let's select the event settings and we are going to add an event and items parameter. All the event parameters that have been registered by Google, they will come as check mark. But if you create something custom, they will not have any kind of tick marks next to them. So we have the items and all we need to do is extract this items array from the data layer. Let's hit plus to create a new variable. We need a data layer variable so we can get this value. Let's go back and See where we have this items array. So this is inside e-commerce.items. E-commerce is an object and if you need to get anything inside an object, you use dot operator. So let's do e-commerce.items. Let's create the variable. DLV stands for data layer variable and we have e-commerce.items. Let's hit save and let's call it GA4 GT event setting GA4 e-commerce parameter. This stands for Google DAG event settings GA4 enhanced e-commerce parameters. Let's hit save. We can go back to the tags and locate the tag we have created for view item and then send this event parameter as that. Let's go to event parameter and select this parameter. This tag will now have the items array inside it. Let's hit save and do one more test using preview mode. Let's go to any of the product pages now to see if everything is working all right or not. So this is the view item event that has fired and it has all the event parameter details. Let's click on this GA4 tag. Now we can see that it has sent this items array back to the GA4. Let's verify this on the Google Analytics 4 property. The view item event has been received and now it has a new items array which contains item ID, quantity, price and every other detail. GA4 usually takes 20 24 to 48 hours to process this data into e-commerce reports. However, now you are effectively tracking view item events with all the event parameters back to the GA4. You can modify this event parameter with a few more details such as adding currency variable, value and some more things. We are going to look at these things now. However, you can completely quit this video right here and everything should be working fine. Let's go back to Google Tag Manager and click on the variables tab. We are going to create a variable for value and currency. Let's click new and click anywhere on the tag setting. As we saw in the debug window, we don't actually have a value parameter coming in. So we need to create a value parameter ourselves. For that, what we're going to do is use a custom built event variable that has been created by other people. You can find this on the template gallery or you can just directly visit it through 
through the variable store here. What we are going to use is Facebook event parameter generator by Steve.io. Let's select, let's add this to the workspace. For some reason, there is a bug. It just does not work right away. This requires an array of items. We already have created a variable for e-commerce items. Let's select that. We are looking for values. The product ID is under item underscore ID. Product name is under item underscore name. The price is underscore price and the quantity is Q-U-A-N-T-A-T-Y. These parameters I am picking directly from this store. So item ID, item name, price and quantity. So what this parameter is going to do, it will multiply the price with quantity and give returns the value of this thing. Let's create a Facebook parameter generator. We are using e-commerce items and this one is returning value. So once we can save that, now we have a variable that creates the value parameter. Let's create one more to capture the currency. Let's create a data variable. Usually currency is under e-commerce dot currency. However, if we go back to the event that we have created, it does not have a currency variable. However, it does have a currency variable inside the items array. So we are going to create a backup variable for this one. What backup variable does is that it will look for e-commerce dot currency parameter and if the e-commerce dot currency parameter does not exist then it will default to a different value let's just create a default value for the backup currency parameter this is going to be e-commerce dot items dot zero dot currency we are using dot zero to get the first items in this object in this list let's rename this as dlv all right now we can hit save and now we have the currency as well as value in this one let's also save this one perfect now all we need to do is send this information back to the google analytics for when the event fired we can add this information manually however we already have created a variable so let's just edit that existing variable we are going to send currency and we are also going to send value the value is under facebook parameter generator and the currency is under current let's hit see it and hit preview to see if everything is working all right or this is the last test we are going to do in order to make sure everything is working all right let's go to any of the product pages and now we can see that the view item event has fired and let's see what kind of event parameter details has it sent. So it is sending the currency as well as value back to the GA4. Let's head back to the Google Analytics 4 account to verify if everything is working all right. So this view item event has come in and now it has the value as well as the currency parameter. So that's how you can configure Google Analytics for view item event in Google Tag Manager. If you want to see how we can add add to cart event, just head to this video. And for full detailed vlog, you can refer in the description to find the detailed vlog. All the course snippet will be present in the detailed video.